so back out again this evening uh, it's about 10 to 4 uh, we're just driving into position hoping to get a fallow doe um, or two um, we're out in the Chilton Hills um, I say we I'm not sure if you can quite see her in the background but we've got the dog with us as well say hello dog um, and uh, we're gonna go and walk along a hedgerow stand in position uh, stand with quad sticks basically um, and hope that we um, we see some fallow they, they keep coming out in the same spot um, most nights uh, just slightly careful where we are um, there's a few houses nearby so we've just got to make sure the fallow are in exactly the right spot to get a safe shot at them which makes it a little bit tricky um, they're sort of out uh, without fail most mornings and evenings in the same place but it's it's probably 50 50 as to whether they they get into the right position or not for us to be able to take a shot um so keep you guys updated as we um as we go through and um hope you enjoy this video so we're just walking into position uh dog and i so what we're gonna do is go down this hedge here along that right hand hedge there and we're gonna wait just on the corner and wait if we can see any deer come out in this bit in front of us um, is the plan. That's one large fallow bricket gold. And there's still a group of 15 fell out there. Now legging it. Dog has followed up. She should have done. It's perfect. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Nice big. Early bricket. Good girl. Come on. Seen on camera, but we managed to get a fallow pricket. Um, had the choice between that and the doe, but the pricket just gave us a better, better shot. And they were starting to get a bit twitchy where they were. Um, otherwise, I would have preferred to have taken the doe. Um, and to be honest, we've got quite a lot of orders of venison in at the minute, so the bigger carcass of the pricket be nicely appreciated. Um, bizarrely, after then taking the shot, Muntjac buck just came out less than sort of 25 meters away from us really. Um, so had that with a nice chest shot as well. So i would always amazed at the robustness of Muntjac. Uh, it turned around, jumped back over the fence, uh, uh, which almost made me think, what bloody hell, what the hell happened there? Uh, but it, there it was, dead, the other side of the hedge. Um, other side of the fence, sorry. And um, dead as a door now. Um, just heading back to the truck now, quickly dump the gun and bits and pieces and um, we'll grab the knife and gloves and go and sort those two out but that's today we've had a row fallow and muntjac so three of the uh three of the four species we've got around here which is a pretty good going right so that's us done today uh, had fallow pricket and a muntjac buck in the end um 
couldn't believe it really. Fallow cricket at just under 100 metres. Uh, and then just after taking the shot, a Munt Jack buck came out. I don't know if we'll see that on the um, on the GoPro footage, hopefully we will. Um, uh, both successfully growlicked, um, look really nice, clean carcasses. Uh, the only thing I'd say is uh, these are deer number six and seven, I think it is, for the Emberleaf. Um, I've been stropping it each time after use, uh, and by the end of the, the fallow, by the time I was moving on to the Munchak, it was it was really blunt actually, um, to the point where I mean, and I, I don't use it to go through the sternum. I, when I growl, I literally just unzip the abdominal cavity and pull everything through through that way. So it hasn't done ribs. Um, it's taken legs and heads off, but I'm I'm not that sort of savage with my knife really. So a bit disappointing. Um, I'll get it home have a look at it, see if it needs another strop to get it back up to sharpness and possibly even speak to Emberleaf about it. Um, other than that, I think it's time to get these two home, give them a chiller and uh, enjoy what's left of uh, some